From their name, it's clear that Asian carp are from Asia. They were brought over for use in ponds, but it didn't take very long until the fish escaped into the wild, and they're creating problems for our native fishes. There are two types of Asian carp that recreational boaters and fishers encounter most often. The silver carp is sometimes referred to as the flying carp. And then there's the big head carp. In addition to the damage that these Asian carp can do to our ecosystems, silver carp have been causing human injuries and breaking things when they fly into boats. Because of their name, Asian carps are often confused with common carp, which is an entirely different kind of fish. Common carp have a richer, stronger flavor that many people find unpleasant. But Asian carp meat is white, flaky, and mild. Now these fish do have bones in their fillets, but there are ways to deal with those bones. And we're going to show you how today. Hi, my name is Dwayne Chapman. I'm with the USGS. I've been doing a lot of research on these fish right here, which are Asian carps. This is a silver carp. It's one of the kinds of Asian carp that has been causing a lot of problems in the United States. It's a filter feeding fish. It's very, very abundant. This particular kind of fish does a lot of jumping into boats and people don't like that because it hits them and causes lots of problems. It can break things in your boat. We like to get rid of as many of them as we can. But, uh, it does have one redeeming characteristic. The, the redeeming characteristic is that these fish are really, really excellent eating. So uh, what we'll be doing today is showing you how to, to take care of these fish so that you can eat them. They do have some issues that most of our native fish don't have. These fish do have bones in the fillets, but the bones are large and they're easy to eat around if you know what you're doing, or you can totally debone the, the, the fillet. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is showing some different ways of preparing this fish so that you can, so that the bones in the fillets don't create problems for you. The meat is delicious. It's not at all like a common carp. If you're familiar with common carp, this fish isn't even very closely related to a common carp. It doesn't look like a common carp and it doesn't taste like a common carp. If you look at this fish, it actually looks more like a salmon than it does a common carp. It doesn't have, it's not a bottom feeder. Common carp have a mouth that's down on the bottom and they suck the food off the bottom. This fish is a filter feeder. It feeds extremely low in the, on the food chain, which makes it a better fish to eat in terms of contaminants as well. It, it eats algae, so it doesn't, so contaminants don't bioaccumulate through the food chain, and it doesn't feed in the bottom, and they grow really fast, and they're not high in fats. All these reasons make this fish a good fish to eat, low in contaminants, and the meat really tastes a lot like cod. So I think you're gonna find that you really are gonna like the fish. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to remove the fillets and show you how to get past the, the uh, uh, red meat along the side. The fish do have red meat along the side. And then we're going to show you how to take those uh, white meat uh, fillets that you get and how to deal with the bones in there. With silver carp and big head carp, but especially silver carp, they, they do have a tendency to deteriorate in quality when they get hot. Uh, quicker than most of the fish that people in North America are used to dealing with. It is critical that if you want to keep your meat of the highest quality, that you take the fish and gut it. Remove the guts as soon as you get the fish, as soon as you can, and remove those and discard them, give it a little rinse, even before it hits the ice. In the top half of an Asian carp fillet, there are three kinds of groups of bones. Up by the head, there are some bones that are very branched and they're very difficult to remove from the fillet. In the middle section of the fish, the bones are shaped like a Y, and those bones can be removed from the fillet or they can be left in the fillet and cut in strips between the bones. Back by the tail, the bones don't have the Y shape. They're straight, and you can cut those off like another layer of skin, leaving a completely boneless piece of meat. I'm going to go ahead and start this procedure by removing the fillet, much like you'd remove it from any fish, with the difference that I'm going to cut around the rib cage, uh, leaving the rib cage attached to the fish. Now you can do this by leaving the rib cage attached to uh, to the fillet and then removing the rib cage later. But it, the rib cage bones on a silver carp are quite robust, and I'm going to save my knife. And that way, when I pull off the um, 
the fillet and the section by the rib cage will be boneless. So we're going to start right here this time and, and uh, cut right down behind the head all the way to the top. There's a bone there that you have to cut through right at the top of the head. And we're going to cut down all the way to the belly and then I'm going to start cut along the back. I, I, I cut to the backbone all the way along and then I move it over a little bit and then cut down on the other side. And the reason I do that is because the thickness of the backbone is so, the backbone is quite thick. And if you cut through like this and cut all the way back, you're going to lose the meat, the thickness of the backbone. And that's some of where some of the best meat is. So we're, we're going to cut along the rib, along the top of the fish down to the backbone. and then cut down on the other side. And then, once I've got it all pulled back here, I'm gonna cut around the rib cage. And when I cut around the rib cage, there's a, there's a place where the ribs come close to the skin right here, and I'm gonna cut through the skin right there, rather than cutting all the way to the belly. It's almost hard not to do that, because, it's, because the ribs and the skin come cl so close together right there. The ribs, and, you can see the ribs and there's the skin. But I, but I want to cut through it on purpose. And the reason is because of the fat content of this filet. This part of the meat up here has about 3% fat in it. And this part has about 27% fat. And it's very, it's, it's a fatty texture and fatty flavor. Um, you probably want to avoid that in your filet. Now if you look at this meat, see how white and pretty that meat is? It's a really gorgeous. The females tend to be a little bit prettier in color than the males. This is a female. And that beautiful white flaky meat that these fish have. You need to be aware of consumption advisories in your area, of course, but generally Asian carp are much safer to eat than most other fishes from the same water body because they feed so low in the food chain and because they're low in fat. 